Hey guys, welcome to the Sports Hub. I'm Connor O'Gara. We have a lot to get to in this show. We got a few games that we want to talk about. Last week, we have a few games coming up that are definitely big headliner games. We got a coach's corner interview with Carney Catholic's own Dave Colling. But before we get to any of that, we talk three stars in this program. First kid we want to talk about, Zach Hackbart, Elwood. Has a huge game for the Pirates. Seven total touchdowns in that one. He threw for three touchdowns. He rushed for four touchdowns. He basically did it all. He and Skyler Werger teamed up to form a very nice duo in that one. They scored 56 points in the first half. Definitely a nice performance to get out of Hackbart. Don't, don't expect that to, to go away anytime soon. Pirates are going to be in the haunts late in the season. Uh, and then another kid, you talk about a great debut. All these kids that we're talking about three stars were debut performances. Christian Best of Elm Creek maybe had the best of them all. Rushed for over 200 yards and five touchdowns on just eight carries. That's an incredible stat to do, uh, to have a debut like that. He kind of was in the two running back system with Hayden Geis last year. Best and Crowley are going to get the bulk of the carries there for the Buffaloes. And if he has games like that, look out. Elm Creek's going to be awfully tough to beat. And then the third star that we look at, Chris Seberger. We talk a lot about individual statistics in this show, um, but Chris Seberger's in this because of one specific play. He gets the game-winning touchdown for Overton. They had seven seconds left. He gets a screen pass from Creighton Ryan and is able to, to, to stay on his feet. Doesn't get tackled at the five-yard line. Gives the Eagles that go-ahead touchdown. Just a big win over Medicine Valley. Nice to see Overton start off that way, considering the, the injury to Justin Hodgson. Uh, Paul Husenfeld's bunch hopefully has a lot more wins like that in their near future. We're going to look at three teams in the hub territory that got really impressive wins over the weekend. I call this not too shabby because that's kind of what I said when I saw the, the results of these games. First team we're going to look at, Lexington. Wow. Who would, have who would have saw that coming? Certainly I didn't after I talked up Holdridge all week. Lexington goes into Holdridge and gets an overtime victory. Trevor McEwen gets the game-winning touchdown in that one in overtime. Just an absolute stunner after Holdridge moved up to number nine in C1. And really, Jason Hale was not, was not pleased with his kids afterwards. Said that his team basically didn't show up for the first 24 minutes of that one. But credit to Lexington, the Minutemen showed up and they played a heck of a game. Got a nice road win. I mean, just because Lexington is still in Class B and Holdridge drops down to C1, I think you know that was still a game that Holdridge expected to win. Holdridge had lost to Lexington since 2008, but uh, Minutemen are able to come away with a nice victory there. And then you look at Class A, Kearney High. Man, really impressive stuff with the Bearcats were able to do to number eight, Lincoln Southwest. That was a game that I was at. Bearcats really took control of that one in the second half. Got a nice turnover to start the second half. Uh, Dylan Fruling picks up the ball in the end zone after uh, Brockton Sterling sacks a quarterback and really the Bearcats just took off from there. I mean, that was a game that they scored 28 straight points. I think word, of, word about Kearney is starting to spread throughout the state. They, see, they, they, they find their way into the World Herald rankings. They're at number 10 right now. Pretty impressive stuff in Class A. In this week's edition of the Coach's Corner, I cut off with Kearney Catholic coach Dave Colling. His squad is off to another 2-0 start. They got a 25-13 win at Ogallala last week. Stars had to kind of grind their way through that one. They get Columbus Lakeview this week. Dave Colling gave me a little bit of preview of what to expect. Well, they're, they're a good ball team. Uh, uh, they got some skilled guys. They lost They lost some guys from last year. I think they made the semifinals last year. Uh, good, good well-coached ball team. Uh, and, and like I said, they got some skilled guys that are pretty dang good. A couple linemen back from last year. But uh, like I said, when they, they're going to give us everything, everything uh, they got when they come here. It's a great program coming in. And uh, so we look to, to get their best. And so we got to play, play our kind of football and, and uh, show up Friday night. You know, I learned uh, a lot about the seniors. They're, they're, they've been great leaders. And, uh, you know, for example, the second game, uh, you know, they just, they kind of, they, they want the game to be put on their shoulders. And that's all you can ask, you know, from seniors. They got five senior linemen, and they asked for the game to be put on their shoulders. And, you know, like the last game, we ran the second half pretty dang well behind those boys. So, so uh, you know, that's a tribute to them. You know, when sometimes you got to, I mean, you know, if you're, you're getting five yards of pop, you gotta, you got to run the dang football. And Coach Harvey does a great job of, uh, offensive coordinator does a great job of play calling, uh, take what the defense gives you type of stuff. But our skill guys are, are coming around. I mean, like you said, they're young. No, but we got some we got some guys that are pretty quick and uh, so forth. It's just, you know, they're they're coming around and they're getting better game by game and, and so I look for them to take that leap again from game two to game three and and uh, you know continue to do that and we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. In this week's what to watch for, I'm gonna look at two C2 teams that have big statement games this weekend. Southern Valley gets to host St. Pat's number six team in C2 right now. 
This is a big game for the Eagles. Eagles are off to a nice 2-0 start. I've got nice offensive contributions out of the likes of Hunter Quinn, Christian Lewis, Jeremiah Perkins. I talked about these guys in the beginning of the season making that next step. Well, now is the time to be able to show it. St. Pat's is a team that comes in, obviously with a really good defense, only allowing six points a game. If Southern Valley is able to get over this little hump, this is gonna be one of the big things that, in my mind, puts them as one of those teams that can make a run in the postseason. C2 is so tough to get into that upper echelon uh, with the likes of St. Pat's and Donovan Trumbull and Sutton, and teams that you have to go through every single year, and they're so consistently good that if Southern Valley can get a statement win like this, at home, I think that would go a long way for really that team believing that it can do some big things because I think they're definitely capable of some big things. So if Southern Valley can make that next step, look out for the Eagles this season. And then we're gonna we're gonna look at Gibbon. I was just looking at Gibbon's schedule and I kind of realized, wow, I can't pick a game in the near future that Gibbon's gonna lose. Gibbon's off to a nice 2-0 start. Um, and really, Mark McLaughlin's group has, has really performed well this season, all things considered. You got Gareth Strosil, you got Snell, you got guys that are capable of making plays for that team, but their schedule doesn't have a top 10 team uh, in it the rest of the season. And obviously things like that can change, but my question is, how long is Gibbon gonna run the table? Because Gibbon could legitimately put itself in that position for a really nice postseason seed. There was one team in the area that said, you know what, I think Gibbon's gonna be a top five team in C2 this year, and I'm kind of realizing they're gonna be right. So. If Gibbon can continue this into this week and the next week, follow the Buffaloes this year because they're going to be one of those teams, I think, in discussion by the end of the regular season and into the postseason. Before we wrap things up here today, I wanted to make sure that uh, you all knew of the opportunity that's available at the Kearney Hub right now. There are openings for, uh, there's an opening for a full-time sports, sports writing position. You could basically do what I do. You could probably be right alongside me right here if you really wanted to be. Uh, there's also two openings for uh, part-time positions that would be involved uh, taking box scores, writing up little game wraps that we do, um, and giving us a big help out on you know those Tuesday, Thursday, Friday nights, those busy nights that we have. So if you have any interest whatsoever, send some writing samples, uh, send your resume, send a cover letter, send that to buck.mahoney at carneyhub.com. So I uh, wanted to make sure that we get the word out there. If you know anybody else that's interested, uh, feel free to let us know. So um, yeah, just make sure that you're um, you're following all these games in the Hub territory. Like I said last week, we're gonna try and tweet out as many of the scores as we're getting. Uh, I think we did, hopefully we did a better job at that last week. Um, and like, like, you know, we we appreciate you guys, if you're at games, to tweet us scores. Let us know because we wanna make sure that we get all those things covered. So uh, for the Sports Hub, this has been Connor Guerra. Thanks guys, we'll see you next week.